Today's scripture reading is found on page 843 in your Pew Bible, and I'll be reading Psalm 1, verses 1 through 6. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but, those to, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of our righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you. Prophecy, prophetic material about 
the coming and the suffering and the sacrifice of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. Amen. There are many categories of psalms that we should know. There's psalms of offering and praise. There are psalms that are called psalms of lament, where you cry out to God. The book of Psalms has almost every, it addresses almost every single emotion that you and I will ever experience in our lives. It ranges from joy to deep grief. You remember Psalm 22? My God, my God, why? Why hast thou forsaken me? And yet it also has Psalms of triumphant feeling. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 27. There are psalms of lament. There are also psalms, psalms of, of pilgrims. The ascent, the songs of ascent, where they're going on pilgrimages to go up to Jerusalem for annual festivals. Those are pilgrim psalms. There are also psalms of thanksgiving, where we just offer thanks to God. Do you remember that famous one, Psalm 136, the long, let's give thanks to the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And then there's Psalms of worship. Psalm 29, where it says, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. And there are the imprecatory Psalms. Imprecatory. To be, to, to offer an imprecatory, an imprecatory Psalm is a Psalm, do you know what it means? Okay, I'm glad you asked. It's a psalm of cursing, of invoking uh, something bad to happen. Punish them, Lord. Punish them for what they've done. Psalm 109 is a classic imprecatory psalm. But there's also another one that we just read, uh, we read uh, this morning. Well, Psalm 129. Don't let anybody say we bless you in the name of the Lord. Punish them, Lord. They, they, they don't deserve, they have inflicted torture to us. We're not going to offer any blessing to them. Read it for yourself sometimes. Psalm 129. It's an imprecatory psalm. There are so many different kinds of psalms. <coughs> there's psalms of royalty. There's psalms that are there's psalms. A lot of the psalms are psalms. They're hymns. And David wrote at least 70, I think 72 or 73 psalms himself. There are also individual psalms of thanksgiving. And then, of course, there are laments. There's communal laments where they're lifting up their griefs on behalf of the community. God, help Israel. Spare Israel. Please help us. And then there are individual laments in the psalms. But today we want to focus on Psalm 1, which is a psalm, it's a wisdom psalm. It offers all of us God's wisdom. It's a great psalm. And there's no, there, there's no mistake that they put, that the people that put the canon together put Psalm 1 first. It wasn't written, it wasn't the first psalm that was ever written. Because we know Moses lived in 1400 BC. So that was his psalm was written uh, earlier. But this is a psalm of wisdom and it teaches us how to live. And there are two roads. There's a road that can lead to blessing, happiness, amen? But there's also a road that leads to destruction. And if we're not careful and we listen to that, that voice that wants to lure us into the road to destruction, we can become destroyed. It can be a dangerous road to travel on. The way of the unrighteous is a con is presented as a contrast to the way of the blessed person, of the wise, of the person who's trying to walk in God's righteousness. And one of the things that the psalmist is saying to us in the very beginning is avoid walking in the way of the sinner. Is avoid walking in step with the wicked. Avoid standing in the way of the sinner. And avoid, thirdly, avoid 
sitting down with those who mock, who's the scorners. It's a progression. First you're walking, then you're standing. You're paying a little bit more attention when you stand, amen? But then you progress even more and you sit down with them. And what happens? When you sit down, you're actually participating with them. You belong to them now. And this is the danger. Because all of us have been tempted in our lives. All of us have been subjected to the world's uh, allurement. Oh, you can have it all. You know, you can have this, you can have that. Just just call 1-800, whatever it is. And, you know, you can you can get this or that, you know. And and a lot of times it's it's just a trap. Dale Carnegie once said, happiness doesn't depend upon who you are. It doesn't depend upon who you are or what you have. It depends solely upon what you think. We can think ourselves out of doom and gloom. Or we can uh, listen to the world. And everything is terrible. Everything is bad. We're all deprived. So what I want to do for the next few minutes is give you some... some kind of practical thinking, some thoughts, and I've sort of put it in an acronym called CARE, C-A-R-E. Can you say that? CARE. Yes. I care about you. You care about the Lord? Yes. Amen. So you won't forget, I don't want anybody to forget this. It can help you. It can help me. It can help all of us. CARE. Because if we use each one of these letters and we think about it carefully, it can make the difference between whether we get tempted to listen to the wrong voice or whether we keep focused and steadfast in the direction that God wants to, to bring us in. Amen? All of us have been called. It's not just one person who comes up here to preach. We're all ministers. Did you know that? All of us. You minister sometimes even more with a handshake. You minister more with a smile, with a word of comfort for somebody. Amen. Then you stop and think about it. You also, God uses you in ways that sometimes you don't even know, just by being yourself. God uses that. And sometimes it's good, because when you don't know it, then you're not so self-conscious. Well, I'm gonna do a good job. No, don't worry about that. It's not about us anyway. It's God using you. He wants to filter his spirit through you and me. Amen. So the first letter is C. And C stands for choose. Choose. You have to choose. You have to make a choice that you're going to walk by faith. You're going to walk in the path and the direction that leads to God's righteousness and life eternal. You have to recognize that the choices that you make have consequences. If I choose to play with fire, I'm going to get burned. Amen. Amen. And I have gotten burned. I remember thinking I could, you know, smash up a candle and it got on my, my sleeve and yikes, you know. You play with fire, you get burned. If we choose to follow the path of God, you know, what was that, that, uh, Poem, that famous poem Robert Frost wrote. I, I, I chose two roads. I, I chose the, the, the road less traveled on, and that has made all the difference. Well, the road that we are traveling on is also what Jesus referred to as a narrow road, and few find it. So those of you, those of us who are here today, we're, we're, a, we're a minority, believe it or not. The, the, the majority of people are going to go in the way they want to go with the world because they're looking for material uh, benefits and everything is the world. But we don't realize, some people don't realize that one day we're going to stand before God. Amen. There are two roads. And the, the road that God wants us to choose is the road to righteousness. And we have to make that choice. So number one is choose. We have to make a concerted effort to do what he wants, not what we want. It's not always easy to do what God wants us to do, to spend time reading the word, 
to get on our knees and pray sometimes. We don't always feel like it. But God will guide you and he'll give you strength if you make, number one, that choice. I'm going to follow you. Just come to him humbly. Do you remember the book of uh, 1 Samuel? And when Samuel was a little boy, he went to Eli and he thought, did you call me? He's heard somebody say, Samuel, Samuel. He went to Eli three different times. He said, you called me. Eli said, no, I never called you. He said, you know what? Maybe that's the Lord. I'll tell you what. When you go back to your bed, just say, Lord, I'm listening. Your, your servant is, is, you speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And then Samuel did just that. He said, he heard his name, Samuel, Samuel. And this time Samuel said, Lord, speak to me, for your servant is hearing. And then God used him. He was one of the first great prophets in the Old Testament. We have to make a choice. And we have to make a choice every day. It's not your, your you know, there's a saying in the music business, you know, you're only as good as your last performance. You know, you might have been playing real good on the piano and all that last year, but that doesn't mean anything about today. What happened today? I heard all those mistakes you made, you know, and uh, don't, don't, don't say that to me today. <laughs> but, uh, but we have to make that choice. The second thing we have to do is, is the A stands for avoid. Avoid. Avoid the world's attempts to get you to join the world. Avoid the steps of the wicked people. People who don't care about anybody. You know, the Bible says don't move an ancient boundary stone. You know what that means? Don't take more of what doesn't even belong to you from someone that it does belong to. Don't steal from them. Then make it, you know, justify. Well, that's okay. They, they're not going to miss it. I can use it for myself. No, you cannot. Avoid those ways of thinking. Avoid. Resist the devil, the book of James says, and the devil will flee. Resist. Just say, no, I don't want to go in that direction anymore. The writer of the psalm wants to convey to all of us that there is this progression. If you walk with the sinner and then you start to stand with them, you're slowing down your pace. And then you sit with them, then they've got you. And you have to avoid, you've got to make a concerted effort, avoid that. Don't even stand with them. Leave it alone. Amen. It can be very dangerous if you do listen to them and stand and then sit with them. Because it's always about selfishness. And that's not what God, God hates pride. It's not what makes me, I'm better than anybody else. That's terrible in terms of the kingdom of God. Because Jesus was king over the whole universe, and yet he humbled himself. And clearly, we're no better than Jesus. We can humble ourselves too and serve God with humility and the fear of the Lord. Amen. So avoid. We got to avoid. We have that. We understand that. Avoid. Just stay away. Number three. The R stands for read. I made it real clear. Read. Read his word. Just read. And that implies studying. That implies meditating. That implies uh, spending time with it. it. The word of God. Examining the scriptures. It implies meditating and reflecting on what God's word says. How many of you read the Bible every day? Tell the truth. Amen. How many of you are going to start to read the Bible every day? <laughs> Amen. I want to see some hands and some more hands. Come on. Make a promise. You're going to start to read every day because that's the basis of being blessed. He says uh, you're happy when you meditate on his word both day and night. And night. Both day, day and, and night. If you just do once once a week, that ain't, that, that ain't going to help you. Amen. I'm giving it to you clear. We have to read his word every day. The R stands for read. Make a point, just 10 minutes. Come on, you can give God 10 minutes. You give, you give the Boston Celtics more than that. When they give the, no, no, the, the Patriots. Boston Celtics have been doing pretty good. You give the Patriots, you know, you give the Patriots an hour. 
you know? And this, well, let me leave that alone. <laughs> give the Lord 10 minutes in the morning. And give him 10 minutes before you go to bed in the evening. After you finish your nice, wonderful dinner, give God some time and feed on his word. And that word will feed you and nourish you even more than any, any of the most delicious lobster you ever had in your life. Amen. God loves you, but he wants us to be blessed, and it's based on, it's predicated on doing it his way. And his way is number three, read. Read his word every day. Spend time in his word. Make the effort to read and study and meditate on his word. And even if it does seem difficult, then, then take five minutes, but get into the word. Get into his word, and get into his word in the evening as well, because that's the basis upon which he says you will be blessed. Happy, blessed is the person who does it this way. That person is happy. They're blessed. And when he talks about they meditate on the law, do you know what that means? The law is synonymous with the entire Bible. It doesn't mean the five, uh, the book, five books of Moses. Any of you know the first five books is Genesis, what? Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Very good. You don't have to, to, to study those per se in, in depth because the law means the whole thing. You can spend time in the book of John. If you don't know what to do, just start with John. Five minutes a day in the, in the, in the Gospel of St. John. And just let God speak to you. And if you don't understand some of it, just keep on asking him and keep on asking him and don't give up because he will bless you. I've been through that. I remember trying to read Bible verses and not being able to understand that. I explained to my wife once, but I finally realized what uh, we talked about this, Psalm 129. I had heard that sermon preached many times and only recently did it click and I understood exactly what the, the, the writer was saying. It takes time. So be patient. Be patient. We're children in Christ. Amen. We're not adults. God is the adult. He's our father, not us. And so we need to read. When he says the law, meditating on the law, he means the entire word of God. And then the last letter. C is what? Choose. Choose. Okay. I hope I didn't see anybody falling asleep yet. All right. Two, the second letter is A for avoid. R is for read, read it. And now the fourth letter, E, is to enjoy. Enjoy, isn't that good? I, I don't take credit, I give God the praise, amen. Enjoy. When he says delight, I thought, well, you know what, delight, I don't really use that word delight, but, but we know what it means. But if we say, yes, I really enjoyed that concert. I really enjoyed that play. I really enjoyed that dinner. I really enjoyed that, that game. I really enjoyed whatever it is. But how often do we say, I really enjoy God's word. I really enjoyed that church service. Well, we all say we enjoy Matthew when he's playing. <laughs> but, but to get in God's word and enjoy his word is something that he wants us to be able to do. It's important to enjoy his word. Enjoy. That means to be enthusiastic about something. You know? Amen. Delight thy Psalm 37, verse 4 says, Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Isn't that good? There are so many promises in the Bible for us, and we don't take we don't even take advantage of them because we're not spending any time. To delight means having a deep longing, having a deep hunger for the Word of God, a strong desire, a passion for God's Word, a thirst. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. You can only acquire that when you allow the Holy Spirit to give you a new heart. You can't come to God with the old stuff, but when he changes you, and that's what he's saying about the tree being planted in waters. You remember that? That Judy read? What it refers to is being born again. 
He will take you from a life of sin and put you on the path of righteousness and give you a solid foundation in Him, in His Holy Spirit. And you will be like a brand new person. That's what it means to be born again. We're no longer slaves of the old nature, but we have a newfound relationship with God and His Word. And it's a supernatural God given relationship for it and love for God's word. He loves each one of you. And if we hunger and thirst for his word, I'm going to tell you something. I can tell you for sure he will bless your life. If you really hunger for him, when you're sincere, don't do it, you know, sort of like, you know, well, I'm trying to read. It. No, put your heart into it. Like you do when you, um, whatever. You can fill in the blank yourselves. It's like a tree firmly planted by streams of water. And that streams of water could also be like the Holy Spirit, just in filling you with His Spirit to bless you. And then the title of this message was, Whatever They Do, Whatever They Do Prospers. And the word prosper, let me just give this to you really quickly. Prosper does not mean Prospering financially, <laughs> you know. Some people look at when the Bible says, you know, He'll give me whatever I want. You know, He'll bless me. You know, all things work together for good. But it's predicated on the them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose, His purpose, not ours. And so we have to remember that God wants to bless each one of us, and He will He will enable us to fulfill His will for each one of our lives. If we surrender and enjoy Him, enjoy Him, whatever they do prospers. But prosper means that it is, it's a progression toward God. It's a moving, you're not staying still. You're moving forth. You're, you're progressing. You're growing. You're growing in God. You're becoming more and more like Christ. It has nothing to do with money, how much you have in the bank. Amen? Amen. Because there are poor people who love the Lord, who are blessed, and they don't, have, they don't have nearly the kind of money that we may have in our bank accounts. Not that we have that much. But to people in Africa or South America, we're like millionaires to them. Amen. So it means making progress. Whatever they do prospers. Prospering means you are growing in God. You're getting stronger. Some of the doubts and things and fears and inhibitions you may have had back then, they're gone because now the Holy Spirit has indwelt himself in you. Praise the Lord. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And then the Bible also says there, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly Listen to this, the way of the ungodly will perish. See, what most people don't realize, as Jesus said, he said there are many that go on that, that, that road is broad, but they don't realize that the end is the end of destruction. And what they have is nothing. It's empty. He talks about the chaff. That's just waste. It's waste. So in conclusion, when we choose, when we avoid, when we read, and when we enjoy, these four things can really help us to prosper. And if we do, if we walk in the direction of God's righteousness, He will, He'll replace on your worry with a sense of worship. He'll replace your pain with praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 